Welcome back to the channel guys. Thanks again for joining me on yet another video. This one today, I'm talking economics and cycles and all that sort of good stuff. So yeah, it sort of works into the channel because I see the whole channel as a, a place that I like to learn. And as I've said many times, it's, you know, putting out content and looking at how I can improve my skills in, in talking with you. And then also, you know, how I'm, how I'm editing the videos or researching or whatever, putting those things together so that it can make, you know, a bit better content. Eventually, I would like to talk to other people on the channel. You know, if you've got channels out there and you want to chat, you know, we've got something important or something interesting uh, to talk about. I'd love to hear from you guys as well. Um, the economics and investing and the polit political side is far more of an interest to me. I find it much more interesting that I can then use it um, actively and apply it in my own life to hopefully see better results in, in what I'm doing. That's why I still love to put these these videos out and talk to people about it. And also, it's a, I don't see this anywhere else on the internet. So I had spoken about it in um, like videos gone by, uh, you, know, you know, how I make money or stuff like that. Um, investing is where it's at. I think that's where everyone should look to eventually. Uh, you know, if you've got your own thing going on and you love what you're doing, like, you know, you're an artist or you've got your own small business or whatever it is because you absolutely love that, great. But I think you should also look at investing that money elsewhere to make that work for you because you just don't know what's down the track. Um, yeah, I just don't, I don't see the point in just sitting on cash. Anyway, let's get into this email. So I've got a subscription service. Uh, this one from Phil Anderson. I've spoken about him. He's probably like the main person I speak about on this channel. Uh, when it comes to economics and cycles and whatnot. Uh, Phil, I've been following for several years now. What he's been talking, what ha what he has been talking about has been hitting the mark time and time again. Uh, if you don't believe me, go back and, well, actually subscribe to his service. It's not expensive at all. Um, I think it should be worth a lot more, but I'm not complaining. It's about 270 bucks Aussie a year. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that's too much for you. It's, it's less than a dollar a day. And if you can put this information into practice, you are going to make a killing. There's far more than 270 bucks ever will. So, yeah, you know, if that's not something you want to put your money towards, it's too much or whatever, um, share it with a partner or something like that. I don't know. I, I just highly recommend it because the teaching, the teachings in here of um, from an economic standpoint are fantastic. And then also understanding cycles. It really, it just really puts you at ease when you see crap going on in the media, when you think the market is at um, you know its best ever, because you know that those sort of times are generally the end. So really getting a feel for how economics works and human psychology, so that you don't get caught up in the same rat race of that investing mentality. You know when when everyone is comfortable and everyone's excited about what's going on that's usually the time to be scared that you know this thing this this ride could be coming to an end so when you understand that and you know how to look for those signs that puts you at ease when stuff does turn to crap so there's probably a few ideas within phil's work uh, that i'll probably have to maybe just do like a little bit of a explanation as we go through because they're not, so I guess they're not things that are spoken about. They're not things that um, are taught in universities, and that's just the way it is. You know, you know, universities probably one of the worst places to go for information um, relating to economics and, and whatnot. So, I'll just start the emails, uh, the email subscription newsletter, um, cycles trends forecast. If you want to know what it is, Phil Anderson, cycle trends forecast. It is. Um, Port Phillip Publishing, and you can find them there to get the Phil Anderson cycles thing there. Anyway, I write back to Phil on these, and he always replies. So that's pretty cool too. You know, if I've got um, questions, he's always happy to answer them as well. Monday, 18th June. Um, this time he is in France. I know he spends his time between France, Jakarta, so Indonesia, uh, the UK, Australia. He's um, Melbourne-based. He's an Australian, and also talks a lot about the US cycle, so the property cycle. The politics is left, I would say, basically out of it. It's it, At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who's in power. You are going to see the cycles play out regardless. That's, that's the interesting part. I've been following this. It's 2018. I've been looking at this since 2010. And it doesn't matter who's in power. This stuff just keeps happening. It does not matter. Left wing, right wing, doesn't, doesn't fucking matter. It's so cool. So um, I, it's quoting here from a Bloomberg article. Bloomberg's a new source. I said, boy, look at that view. Wouldn't that make a great condo? Trump thinking from a real estate perspective notes North Korea has great beaches. You see that where whenever they're exploding their cannons into the ocean. And I explained 
And I explained, you know, instead of doing that, you could have the best hotels in the world right there. You know me, or you should by now. Since 2010, I've been bullish about the Australian and indeed the whole world's economy. Again, it's in all of the newsletters. I think they, what I've got anyway, goes back to 2014. Um, so yeah, you can subscribe to the service and then you can see all of the past uh, predictions, I guess, forecasts, whatever. Uh, I was one of the very few economists around the world in 2007 that publicly, anyway, correctly predicted the ensuing downturn in 2009. I was the only person in the world to correctly predict the world economic upswing that would come next. I don't know, there's probably a few of them out there, but they're, they're, so, fearly, uh, they're so rarely covered that you're not really going to hear about them. I also clearly outlined to you how long this is likely to last. Phil does very well for himself. He follows his own calls. Uh, you can hear his story, how he, how he got started as well back in the 90s, followed his calls, made a mozza. Uh, let's go on. This is all on the public record. Since 2010, I've told you relentlessly the markets, that markets would go up. Very few people believed me at the time, but market professionals knew it was happening. That's why they were buying up all the real estate they could after 2010. It's not time to start slowly preparing for a downturn. Oh, sorry. It's now time to start slowly preparing for a downturn. That means that you start again slowly to build an improving cash position for yourself. So if you've got assets now, we're in 2018, uh, that you had bought several years ago when Phil's talking about his turns of the cycle, he would say, potentially start to look to unwind some of those assets into a cash position, be ready for the market to fall. And then as it does fall, then you have to buy in when everyone else is panicking. Um, it means you manage risk as best you can to start tightening your risk parameters. If you're in business, don't let your debts blow out. Collect what you are owed more quickly. You have about 18 months to sort that out. So he's predicting this is going to be end of 2019. Sort that out and put yourself in the best position possible to take advantage of distressed sales that are likely to occur in 2021. So he's not saying buy at that top. You know, this is when it starts to go a bit crazy. He's saying it could take a year or two before it comes down far enough. Uh, and too many people are scared and that's the time to, to jump in. I'm not expecting any possible ec economic slowdown to be serious. So this isn't the really, really bad one. That one is going to come in the 2020s. So all these preppers and everyone's saying the world's coming to an end this year or next year or whatever they're going on about, I am saying they're all 100% wrong. I followed this long enough. It doesn't look like it's coming to an end this year or next year. 100% I'm that confident and I have to be because that's what my income relies on. Um, if I'm wrong, then that's what happens. You know, I have to figure out another way to make money. But because that is the way I have seen it and my experience and my research shows that it's not going to come to an end, then I have to put my money where my mouth is and go with it. As I've said, I'm not expecting the possible slowdown if indeed we get one to be serious. There is a lot of money, a ton of money even, waiting for the next downturn. So people are waiting on signs, waiting for this to fall, and then they're going to come in, but you're going to hear all the bad news. I'll skip through a little bit more of this because uh, you can see that there are a few things that um, it sort of repeated. So he's talking about his articles um, from the previous time. This is what I've said going on and on and on again. And so we go to the, his financial timetable, giving you that timing. And you can find this financial timetable on the internet. I think if you put in uh, Phil Anderson property clock, it should be like a 24 hour clock and you can find that in Google. Uh, it might take a bit of studying and, and understanding what he's talking about there, but um, it's, it's definitely out there for free. So it's, he doesn't mind, you know, have a go. Just look back a few hundred years in the 18.6 year segments and you'll see exactly what I mean, which is what my book does. He's also got a lot of the information in the book. It's like, it's a freaking thick book. Good to go through. Second thing is, no matter what good news comes out over the next 18 months, it won't change anything. And it certainly won't change what's coming next, the mid-cycle slowdown. So we're in an uptrend, little bump, we keep going. It's gonna look like the world comes to an end, but it's just a bump. Let me give you an example. Let's say, so this is just, just giving you an example. It's not real, it could happen, but it may not. Let's say that North and South Korea really do get some detente I think that's what the word was. I looked it up the other day. <laughs> Detente. French people fill me in. Going on. Perhaps owing to the newfound special relationship between Trump and Kim Jong-un. And let's say North and South really do open up the border, as everyone seems to want. All that will happen is rich South Koreans will invade the North and buy up all the land. Poor North Koreans will invade the South, singing songs of praise to their dear leader along the way and driving down wages in the South. Seems pretty possible if the borders are opened up. That place is going to be cheap and you know we can improve on it boom let's go there and invest 
The rest of them are like, sweet, I'm getting out of here. You know, my, my leader opened up, my leader's the best, blah, blah, blah. Now there's so many more people in the South that obviously drives wages down. We'll see what happens. And history will repeat and the real estate cycle will continue to turn. And you can also bet the Trump organization will be one of the first organizations in there one day winning deals in North Korea should that nation open up to development. I had to laugh in May. Oh, sorry. I had to laugh in May. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un called for plans to build a world-class beach resort in his country's eastern region. Emphasis on the word his. You can see what's going on here, right? Only a land tax can fundamentally change the system. So this is another idea that Phil talks about, that land tax is the way to get rid of these heavy cycles, the boom and busts that we see. And that's another discussion on its own. I think it's worthwhile looking into that. So again, it's sort of, you know, I'm, I'm shilling uh, Phil Anderson and the book here, but it's not a very expensive investment, especially if you're interested in investing and uh, economics and, and whatnot. You know, to, even if you don't agree with it and you think it's absolute trash, doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but you've never heard of it, probably a good idea to read it, figure out why it doesn't make sense to you, and then form another decision there. So, and one of those will never be introduced. So none of these governments are ever going to introduce a land tax because it would fund them, uh, because it would change the system for the benefit of all humanity, not just the ruling rent owing class. So the ruling people, they own the land and you know, they take the gains from the land, the capital gains when the gain, when the land value increases, you know, when we're in the screen, the land value increases, they take those gains as well as the rent that they're making off the land during that time that they're holding the land. Witness Vancouver as proof. So Vancouver, Canada has seen a housing frenzy so bad that now even homeowners want it reined in. Their fix, tenant protections, housing subsidies, and steps to enable developers to build higher buildings more quickly so more housing will come online. So you, can, you start to get a, an idea that all these fixes are band-aids. They're not hitting the main issue why these cycles keep happening. And governments don't give a shit. What, what do they care? They just want to keep the people happy at the time. The, the people don't understand economics uh, at all. That's why the mess keeps happening time and time again. Governments just want to keep people happy so that they stay elected. You use band-aid approaches. Public thinks that's okay. You move on to the next band-aid issue. The Age, 3rd of June, also reported measures in Vancouver to increase the housing supply and a slew of measures that aim to curb housing demand and chase away overseas buyers. The New Democrats raised British Columbia's foreign buyer tax to 20% of a home's purchase price from 15%. So you want to buy into uh, Vancouver, then you've got to pay an extra 5%. It was 15% tax, now it's 20% tax. All this money just keeps going in, but the problems don't change. In addition, the party's plans to impose higher property taxes on second homes, on families whose primary breadwinners' earnings come from money abroad, and on homes valued at more than three million Canadian dollars. Vancouver has passed local measures, including a tax on empty homes. In other words, every possible idea they can think of, except a land tax that would take the rent for the people, and then, uh, and then lower all the other taxes on people's wages at the same time. A land tax will never be implemented because it would actually work. So that's Phil's opinion there. I think it comes from a lot from like uh, Austrian economics and, and whatnot. I did question him about that. And I said, that sounds kind of socialist. You know, you're taking the land, taking the gains, and then we're all going to distribute it to the people. And um, I have to go back and read that because the answer that he gave did show that it wasn't a socialist idea. I think there's a little bit more to it. So I apologize. I don't have the answer right here, but it did sound a lot more like a um, anarcho-capitalist uh, way to solve the problem. People would get the money from the land. They have more interest in the land. Um, taxes come from it. You know, it's your area that you love. You want to see that area do well so that you get more money back from it. I think people would still, they wouldn't own the land. The land would be leasehold as well. Um, he talks a lot about Singapore. So check that out as well if you're interested. So back to the email. Uh, so start planning for a downturn after 2019. Not expected to be serious amidst all the really good news that will be coming out over the next 18 months. So there are the takeaways for me here. The next 18 months, I guess we're going to see a lot of good news. People thought that the downturn had already started in uh, January when we saw the markets uh, drop. I don't know what it was, 10%, something like that. Um, not talking crypto markets, I'm talking financial markets. And yeah, they did drop uh, significantly. So uh, yeah, he's looking for another good 18 months of good news. That is, I would say that's probably con very contrary to what the speculators, oh sorry, what the um, the news economists are saying, you know, they've been talking about a downturn for several years now since the last downturn. 
Anyway, let's see how it rolls. Thanks again for joining me with that one. Um, if you like that, let me know. I will probably keep putting them out because I really enjoy it. And I, I like that there will be a uh, like a video record of these emails. Uh, I don't see Phil put these out because it is a subscription service. So um, yeah, I didn't go through the whole email. I'm using it for educational purposes, but I think it's a really good place that let's see what happens in 18 months time. Here is the physical evidence of the of the call from Phil. Um, I'm going with it. And if it doesn't happen, then, you know, eggs on our face. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for joining me. You can, um, we can chat on Facebook and Instagram. That's usually where I'm at. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Till then, take care. Peace out.